Wild Beyond the Witchlight is here, not only having players trek through the Feywild, but the book also introduces some new player options to help immerse players in the Domains of Delight. In this video, I will be creating a character build using the Harrigan, taking the leap out of the Feywild, and drawing inspiration from characters like Rocket Raccoon and Bucky O'Hare to create a crafty Rabbifolk character to take into your games. Hello, welcome to Dungeoneers Pack, a channel bringing you player focused discussions and character guides for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. My name is Josh, thank you for watching. Before jumping into the build, let's take a look at my character build guidelines. I'm going to focus on levels 1 to 10, as most campaigns are played in this level range. The goal of the build will be to fulfill the concept, but also be viable for combat and roleplay. I will be covering the features in race, class, and background choices that make the build possible. And finally, ability scores will not be defined as each table decides how ability scores are calculated. Instead, I will provide a ranking as to which ability scores you should prioritize for the build. The concept for this build lifts the tinkering humanoid critter trope from the sci-fi genre and places it in a fantasy setting. Just like Rocket Raccoon, you will have a number of gadgets at your disposal to support your teammates and troubleshoot problems that come your way while packing some heavy artillery to take down your enemies. For this build's race, we are using the Haragon from Wild Beyond the Witchlight as it's a perfect option to play into the cute animal person with a gun trope. What makes the Haragon a solid option is the Hair Trigger, Leperin Senses, and Lucky Footwork racial features. Hair Trigger lets us add our proficiency bonus to our initiative rolls. Leperin Senses grants us proficiency with the Perception skill, and Lucky Footwork lets us get a second chance at beating a Dexterity saving throw, allowing us to add a d4 to the result if we failed. When it comes to our class and subclass, we will be multi-classing. Our primary class and subclass will be an Artillerist Artificer, as it will give us the option of being able to craft magic items, and as an Artillerist, we will be able to craft a magical pistol or turret-like device with offensive or defensive options. The dip into Forge Cleric isn't optimal, but the early subclass features are just too flavorful to pass up and plays into the theme of being able to enhance and craft items to help us on our adventure. Drawing from our sci-fi inspiration, for this character's background we are going with Bounty Hunter. This character uses their skills to hunt down any unsavory criminals or destructive beast if the price is right. The in combat role for this build will have us sitting at range as a damage dealing blaster, but we will have some supportive abilities to help out our team. Out of combat we will be a troubleshooter, using a combination of tool proficiencies, magic items and spells to solve most problems that come our way. For our ability scores, prioritize intelligence to improve the accuracy of our spells, our Eldritch Cannon, and raise the difficulty of our spell save DC. Next would be Dexterity to boost our armor class and initiative. We then followed up with Wisdom to set up our multi-class dip into Forge Cleric and give us a slight bump to our skills. Then Constitution, followed by Charisma, and Strength will be our dump stat. Moving on to our skills, the Bounty Hunter background will give us insight and stealth. Insight will help us distinguish who's an ally or an enemy, or if someone is trying to pull a fast one on us. Stealth plays into our character's nimble nature. From our class, I chose Arcana and Investigation. Arcana showcases the character's arcane knowledge while Investigation represents their ability to comprehend how magical or non-magical devices work or put together clues to track down a slippery bounty. And our final skill comes from our race. As a Harrigan, we have proficiency with Perception, which will allow us to spot traps or enemies before they can hurt us or our party. Now let's get into a level by level breakdown. Starting at level 1, we pick up our Artificer class proficiencies and the magical tinkering and spellcasting features. We are proficient with the light and medium armors, simple weapons, thieves tools, one artisan's tool of our choice and I chose cartographer's tools, and we are proficient with constitution and intelligence saving throws. Magical tinkering will let us create a small item that produces effects similar to the prestidigitation cantrip. This could be flavored as an arcane multi-tool or even a wand of prestidigitation. The spells on this list are meant to be flavored as fantasy versions of sci-fi devices, but it won't be a comprehensive list. Here are my recommendations for cantrips and first level spells. May need to keep your items in tip top shape. Ray of Frost can act as a magical freeze ray coming from your Eldritch Cannon. Catapult is a fun damage spell to turn any item into a deadly weapon. Cure Wounds, Detect Magic, Disguise Self could be an illusion based magic item activated on your wrist or belt, Fairy Fire, and Identify. With level 2 we gain the Infuse Item feature. With Infuse Item, we will be able to enhance some of our own or a member of our party's gear or whip up a magic item instead. Here are my Infusion recommendations. Enhanced Arcane Focus will give our Arcane Focus a little bit more juice. Enhanced Defense and Enhanced Weapon are solid options to pick up early to upgrade our party's gear, but when we dip into Forge Cleric later, swap these out for other options. Replicate Item, Bag of Holding to have an extra dimensional backpack. Replicate Item, Goggles of Night since we don't have Dark Vision. And finally, Replicate Item, Sending Stone for some Arcane Powered Walkie Talkies. At level 3 we choose our Artificer subclass and we are going with Artillerist. Going with the Artillerist gives us the tool proficiency, Artillerist spell list, and Eldritch Cannon features. As an Artificer, we also pick up the right tool for the job feature. 
Tool proficiency will give us proficiency with woodcarver's tools to help with our arcane firearm feature we receive at 5th level. The artillerist spell list adds some explosive spell options. For this build, we will have access to shield, thunder wave, scorching ray, and shatter. Eldritch cannon will provide the build with a consistent damage option. We can flavor it as an arcane powered pistol, a small magical turret like construct, or simply a special crafted wand. And right tool for the job lets us cobble together any tool we need for any given task or challenge. Next at level 4 we have the option between an ability score increase or a feat and I went with the feat. I chose Fate Touch playing up the idea that this character is otherworldly while giving us access to Missy Step and a first level divination or enchantment spell. While Hex and Hunter's Mark are tempting, they conflict with their use of Eldritch Cannon. I'd recommend the spell's Command or Dissonant Whispers if you're looking for some control options or Gift of Alacrity or Comprehend Languages if you're feeling the need for some supportive options. For level 5 we gain the Arcane Firearm feature and gain access to second level spells. Arcane Firearm lets us turn any wand, quarterstaff, or rod into an arcane focus. When using the focus, we can add an additional d8 to our casted spells. Here are my recommendations for second level spells. Heat Metal could be our character using tiny clockwork constructs or a sticky bomb-like device to heat the armor or weapon of an enemy. Invisibility is our cloaking device. C Invisibility could be us using heat signature reading goggles. Spider Climb could be anti-gravity or magnetic-like boots. And finally, Web could be ripped straight out of Spider-Man's playbook and be a web bomb. With level 6, we start our dip into Forge Cleric. As a level 1 Forge Cleric, we gain bonus proficiencies, the Blessing of the Forge feature, and access to Cleric spells. Bonus proficiencies gives us proficiency with Heavy Armor and Smith's Tools. Heavy Armor won't come into play as we are a dex based build, but the Smith's Tools adds another tool into our utility belt. Blessing of the Forge can replace our enhanced defense and enhanced weapon infusions. While our infusions do scale as we level, utilizing Blessing of the Forge in place of enhanced defense and weapon lets us choose other infusion options trading raw power for utility. For our cleric spell options, here are my recommendations. Guidance, Light, Spare the Dying, Bless, Detect Evil and Good, Protection from Evil and Good, and Shield of Faith. When we hit level 7, we take our last level into Forge Cleric picking up the Channel Divinity Artisan's Blessing, which lets us cobble together non-magical items worth 100 gold or less. This feature is another flavorful ability that further plays into the crafty gadget wielding character fantasy. At level 8 we jump back into Artificer for the rest of the build. As a 6th level Artificer, we gain tool expertise and access to higher level infusions. Here are my recommendations for the infusions. Repulsion Shield, Resistant Armor, and Spell Fueling Ring. Hitting level 9 we gain the Flash of Genius feature, which lets us add our intelligence modifier to a teammate's ability check or saving throw. And finally for level 10, we have the option between an ability score increase or a feat again, and this time I went with the ability score increase, choosing intelligence to increase our accuracy with our spell attacks and improve our spell save DC. Now let's take a look at our pros and cons. For our pros, we have a consistent damage option. Our bonus action will always give us the option to use our Eldritch Cannon to deal damage. We have the option to stack damage with our action and bonus action, or use our action to drop a support or control spell while still dealing damage with our bonus action. We are a strong problem solver. With a combination of tools, magic items, and spell casting, we should have an answer to any problem that comes our way. For our cons, the Forge Cleric dip is not necessary and may feel a bit redundant. It is a total flavor choice and this build doesn't take advantage of the heavy armor proficiency gained by dipping into the subclass. This build works perfectly without the multiclass. For those wanting a melee option, this isn't the build for you. Stay back and blast away. With that said, I want to hear from you. What kind of Haragon hero would you make? Let me know down in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, I drop a video every week. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you're looking to play a bard but want a different spin on the class, check out my Field Commander Bard build. You can click on the thumbnail on the screen or in the link in the description below. Alright, I'm out of here. Have a good one.